I'm here to talk about Open Lineage, which is an open standard for data lineage. Really quickly, who is familiar with data lineage? Show of hands. Okay, that's a lot. Uh, so you can tell me if you disagree with how I talk about it. That's that's very useful. Um, first, of course, why? Why now? Why now an open standard for data lineage? Um, so for, uh, uh, of course, we've all seen this. Have we all seen the 2022 machine learning, artificial intelligence and data landscape? Uh, you know, we've all seen industry diagrams like this before, where it's like, you know, you work here, like in that pixel or whatever. The data world has gotten kind of crazy. There's more data than there's ever been before. There are more tools than there have ever been before. And each of these tools is an entire career to understand. Um, that's one reason why now for data lineage. Um, a bit of fun here. Has anyone heard of stable diffusion? Stable diffusion is an algorithm. It's a text-to-speech algorithm. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to see what it thought a data pipeline was. So it thinks this is what a data pipeline is. Which I think is kind of interesting. It's like vaguely linear, but kind of not really. And then it thinks this is what a data ecosystem is. It's like spoken hub, but I think it's kind of interesting that if you ask a computer to tell us what a data pipeline is, it's like, oh, something completely unintelligible is what you think a data pipeline is. Um, I think more importantly, though, more concretely, uh, we have a self-service data culture now, which we didn't have 10 years ago. Uh, if you need to do a study on a data set or something, you can spin up your own cloud infrastructure. You can use SaaS pipeline components. You can use mature open source platforms like Apache Spark and Airflow and Flink. And you can build it yourself and you don't need to ask your IT team for any infrastructure. And what that means is that I think the dilemma for data engineering has changed. It used to be, how do I build the pipeline I need to build to accomplish this goal? And I think now a lot of the dilemmas are how many pipelines are currently running? Like there are over like a hundred pipelines already running and they're creating a whole bunch of data. How can we learn about the pipelines that exist? How can we know what goes on inside them? How can we operate them better? So this is why I think the time is now for an open standard for data lineage, because data lineage is more important than it's ever been before. It's really all about building a healthy data ecosystem within an organization. Um, it doesn't even matter how big your organization is. You probably have multiple teams working on data. They probably think about data in different ways. They define data sets differently. They use different stacks and tool sets. And when they start to collaborate with each other, they sometimes get into conflict. Is this familiar? Uh, right. So building a healthy data ecosystem, I believe is all about shared understanding. So it's really hard to build an ecosystem either within an organization or broadly, unless you have a consistent understanding of the basics of the data sets you're talking about. Where did it come from? Who owns it? What's its basic size and shape? How often does it get updated, etc. This is why I believe it's important. So what is data lineage? Really simply, it's keeping track of the producers and consumers of each data set and the inputs and outputs of each job. Um, does anyone disagree with that? Who, who knows what lineages? Anyone have a different definition? No, seems right. Just keep track of everything. Just know everything that happens. <laughs> know everything that goes on and write it all down, I guess, um, is data lineage, right? This can be really useful, though. Uh, it's a lot of work. But, for example, if you need to know whether a particular data set left your infrastructure or not. You might need to know whether it produced other data sets or was a part of other packages or things like that, right? So understanding whether we've been in compliance, uh, it's important to know data lineage for that. Uh, I think it's important when you want to start optimizing the way your pipelines run to understand how things are connected and which pipelines are connected to other pipelines. You can do things like automating backfills uh, and things like that. I also think it's really important because it helps establish a context and language. If everybody handles data lineage in the same way, we can all talk about particular data sets in very particular ways. We can say, no, 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 this data set, this run on this day. Uh, and if we're, if we're sort of managing data lineage and studying that, then it gives us a context and a language that we can use to communicate with one another. Um, but really the possibilities are endless of lineage. Like, uh, I, I, someone asked me a while ago, like, what, what is lineage useful for? And the answer is, well, what's a map useful for? Like, if somebody asks you to describe all the ways that a map is useful, you might have a challenge because it's just useful in, in a lot of very inherent and foundational ways. And lineage is the same. It's a map of your data pipeline. And it's useful in all the ways that maps are useful. Specifically, though, dependency tracing, root cause identification, right? Like, if you can see all of your tasks that failed and they're in a structure as opposed to a list, you kind of know where to start, right? Just visually, you know where to start. 
So sound great, right? Um, but how, right? So how do we actually do this? Uh, how do you know? How do you know where all your data comes from and where it all goes? Well, there are a couple of different approaches that people take for data lineage. Um, but I think it all starts with with this. Um, and this is a, and we're all familiar with EXIF, right? When you take a picture on your digital camera, uh, the camera embeds a whole bunch of metadata inside the photo itself, right? And so that we believe is the right way to study lineage is that you capture the metadata about lineage when the data set is created, at the time it's created. You observe it and you capture the data then, as opposed to trying to capture it later. You can take a photo and figure out where it was taken. You might even get scary close. Like you might even get kind of accurate, but it's much better to just write the data down <laughs> when you're there watching it happen. So this is kind of what's, what we believe for data lineage is it should be observed. There's a couple ways to do that. The first, and this is, this is where I would say open lineage was primarily designed for, was for observing pipelines. So you integrate in some way with a pipeline system, a data orchestration tool, a, you know, a data pipeline tool, something like that. And as jobs run, as data sets are created, you observe the way they affect data and you report what you've learned to a metadata repository. This is uh, one way that you can do it. Uh, this is how the open lineage Airflow integration works, for example. Also, the open lineage Spark and DBT integrations work like this. Um, this is really good for understanding like everything that that system does, right? Like if you instrument Airflow, you can understand what Airflow does. Um, this is really not good for stuff that happens outside of your of your of your system, right? Like somebody grabbing a database, dumping it, and reloading it somewhere else. Like this can't catch that. Uh, it just can't. It can't observe it. There is another option though. You can process query and activity logs. So some databases, like Snowflake, for example. Uh, they remember everything that somebody did. You can go ask them, hey, what what queries have you run? You can get a list of those, and then from that, you can reverse engineer the lineage that happened. And this is good for, like, if you need to know everything that touched Snowflake, right? Or you need to know everything that touched that particular data set that's really sensitive. Um, it's, it's not necessarily good for getting anything that isn't in Snowflake, right? Like, what if, you're not, what if your stuff's not all in a database that provides this capability? So you can get some of it with this, but not all of it. Another tactic that we see sometimes is analyzing source code. This is what a lot of the traditional vendors uh, are doing, and they're looking at your source code repository, and they're going through all your code, yanking out queries when they find them, and then sort of, what's the what, what, what's the right phrase? Not reverse engineer, because it's not a thing that happened. You're like, forward engineer, you're, you're making up. Like, these are all the things that could potentially happen with all of these queries and how they might relate to each other if they were all to run. Uh, and this is great for like design time lineage. If you're trying to figure out like, is the application that I'm building creating a data structure that's that makes sense in my data pipe? Like this is good for if you are building the application, you want to know what the data footprint is going to be like, but you won't actually know if anything ran. So it's not really observational lineage. It's more design time lineage. And open lineage was designed so that all of these tactics could be used and talk about lineage in the same way and send the same date metadata to a, a repository that all understands all of it. My belief is that like data lineage isn't a thing where you deploy a technology or buy a solution and then you have it. Uh, it's a thing where you deploy a bunch of different tactics to try to get it. You approach 100% and never reach it. Just like observability in your data center, right? New things get deployed. You don't know how to observe them yet. It's always a game like that. I think lineage is the same way because it's it's about like as the pipelines get more complicated and more nuanced, then the the sort of the lineage observation has to follow suit. So I think I think it requires a bunch of tactics and I think uh, tighten your shoes, get, bring your water, <laughs> pack a bunch. It's kind of what I think. Uh, and I hear a lot of really common lies about lineage uh, particularly from commercial vendors. I think I said this one once. Um, but these these are non-malicious. These are well, well-intentioned lies. But they're all really difficult, right? Like anyone who can tell you, we're going to get you fully automated, real-time, end-to-end lineage across everything is lying to you. They, they may be able to do it in a very scoped way. This is the argument for an open standard for lineage. As we've been seeing in the industry, a lot of people doing it a lot of different ways. And the problem is that there's really nothing to be gained 
by competing on the way that lineage metadata is collected, I don't think. I think there's plenty of room for industry competition and, and innovation on what you do with this metadata. And there's all kinds of interesting stuff you can do there, but collecting it and observing it, I don't think there's anything to be gained by competition there. I think there's something to be gained by standardization there. Uh, so open lineage is an open standard for the collection of lineage metadata from pipelines as they're running. That's open lineage. Um, has anybody heard this fable called the stone soup fable? I, I had not. A few? Um, so I don't think this is a U.S. thing. Uh, one of the founders of Open Lineage, Julian Le Dem, told me this, and I hadn't heard it, but here's how the fable goes. There's a weary traveler. Traveler's hungry. Approaches a village. Doesn't have any food. Needs to eat. And proceeds to set up a fire and put a pot on it and put a bunch of rocks and a bunch of water in the pot. People are like, what are you doing? I'm making stone soup. It's almost ready. It just needs some vegetables and some carrots and stuff, and then it'll be ready. So someone throws a couple carrots in. Someone comes up there. What are you making? I'm making stone soup. It has some carrots. It just needs some potatoes, right? The whole fable is about how you can, you can show up with a vessel and an intention, and through the power of community, you can make you can make something that nourishes everybody, right? That's that, is, and that is open lineage, right? And what we have showed up with is a vision, a vision that all of these producers of lineage metadata and all these consumers of lineage metadata can work with a single standard in the center. This is what we have as our vision. And before Open Lineage, of course, all these integrations have to be done separately. With Open Lineage, they get to be done once. This is this is the vision. Should I pause? A any questions or anything before I keep going? Nope. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're missing a very big use case. Legal traceability or those data sets going into Dore data sets. I kind of thought that was here with verifying compliance, but maybe not. Okay. So, how does Open Lineage work? Well, here's the stack. Um, the first thing I'll notice or point out is that Marquez is the concrete metadata server that exists and the user interface. Open Lineage is the spec and the standard and all the things that collect all the lineage. So. Open Lineage is the bottom half. Marquez is the top half, if you're looking at architecturally. On the bottom here, we have all these tools that generate Lineage metadata, and then their integrations with each of them. Open Lineage Airflow, Spark, and DBT. They emit Open Lineage run state updates that conform to the standard. Marquez catches those updates, renders them to the user. Each job run has a life cycle. So Open Lineage is observational, and that means that every Lineage update is saying, a job started, a job stopped. They're all about job lifecycle. And so when you first start finding open lineage, the first thing you'll send is a start event. With that start event, you pass along an event type of start, event time, the producer, and then perhaps you, you know your input data sets at this point, you could pass them along as well. Uh, when the job is complete, you send a complete event. Maybe now you know your output data sets. You could send your input and outputs here or input and outputs here. Doesn't matter at each pass, at each phase along the life cycle, you can augment it with additional metadata about input and output data sets. And each run state update that you send has the transition, which is start or finish or abort, and a transition time, and then it packages up these three entities, the run, the job, and the data set. It's the core object model of open lineage. Uh, a run, so I'll start at the bottom, the data set roughly correlates to a table or to a directory or to a bucket or to a model, I suppose, in DBT. No, actually, that would be a job. So yeah, basically, table. Uh, maps to a table or to a, to a directory. A job maps to an Airflow. It maps to an Airflow task. Um, it maps to a... Fear sure is the spark. In DBT, it maps to a model. In Great Expectation, it maps to a checkpoint. And so the data set and job are sort of abstractions for these notions and the different underlying tools. And then a run is an instantiation of a job. Uh, so every time a job runs, you give it a new run ID. Now, something that's kind of interesting about this is that you can attach different information to the run, the job, and the data set in the form of facets. And so we've kind of we've kind of gone along this path where we've chosen to do observational lineage, which requires us to do the last mile of work and integrate with all of the different in different platforms. And while we're there, we can gather all kinds of data about job performance and data quality and all kinds of stuff. And so we have an opportunity if we're going to do the work to 
get the lineage that we need to gather all this stuff as well, help out with data operations, help with data quality. And so we're kind of hoping that as people integrate lineage into their pipelines, they take the opportunity to gather a bunch of this data as well, uh, which we think will be really, really useful. And so uh, also this is an opportunity for, um, for contribution because these facets don't have to live inside the core open lineage repo. They can live elsewhere. Uh, we're kind of excited to see what people do with these. Uh, one thing I'll note also is that lineage is very strongly built on correlations. And so um, I'll, I'll like the differentiation. If you're using a, a, a lineage tool that has a model that's data set to data set, as opposed to the open lineage, which is always data set job data set, um, it, can, it can make direct data set to data set connections. That doesn't exist in open lineage because there's always a job. So what happens is open lineage will observe this first job, start getting metadata about that first job, and it'll tell it about this data set and that data set. And then it'll go, okay, it'll hang on to that. Then it'll hear about this job, which tells about that data set and that data set. And it'll wait a second, that's the same data set. These are correlated now. So lineage is built on correlations. And these correlations are based on data set names. So I off, I had this slide titled naming is everything for a long time, but it, it kind of jumped to the end, right? Naming is everything in open lineage. If, if you're looking to build an open lineage integration with some tool, um, it's like... The best touch point with the open lineage community is agreeing on how you're going to name the data sets so that everybody else names them the same way. Um, and there's a there's a naming convention. I would call it a bit inchoate because there are answers for your traditional stuff, but there are still a few fringe things like um, streams, <laughs> for example, where the naming conventions are still being still being derived. Uh, but naming is everything. And, and like I mentioned about the stone soup, it's it's. <laughs> like we were a very small company when we when we proposed open lineage datakin was less than 10 people and so it really was stone soup for showing up with a big empty cauldron right but we've seen this huge snowball effect happen since then so even we 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 set up the stone bowl about a year and a half ago and since then we've got integrations from a lot of these folks which from all of these folks which is a lot of the data industry it's nothing like that first graph i showed you with all those 800 bajillion logos on it but it's not bad it's not bad for a young project that's just getting started. Um, and actually, Manta is the latest addition to the list, which is really exciting because Manta has been doing data lineage for a bazillion years, and they know what they're talking about. So the fact that they're interested in an open standard for this is really, really promising. So on to Marquez. Uh, I would like to show you a little bit of Marquez and how it works. Um, just get you a sense of what the UI looks like. Actually, before before that, any questions on like the object model or how it? Yes. Yeah, or the sound to table kind of fetch based like open Jesse for the different. Did it? That's emerging. So the, the open lineage was, I would say, it was designed primarily with batch in mind, but thinking for the future. But the streaming integrations haven't been done yet, and so I can't I can't honestly tell you that the specification uh, has benefited from them yet. Uh, I think that once we start doing those integrations, we might we might find that the we'll probably propose changes to the spec to support them. May I? Oh, of course. I don't think that Atlas is consuming open lineage events yet, uh, but there's been conversation. I think they were part of the initial specification conversations. Um, it follows a similar model. Yeah. Uh, but not not entirely the same, and it's not it's not a standard. Uh -huh. Cool. Oh yes, our best is the best way to integrate with openly. Like have we talked about that there should be some crawlers that should exist for services where facets are not amenable. Um. Yeah. I. I think that facets are good for extending the model as far as how to like the, the, the building blocks, the actual pieces, um, I think it depends on the integration. So for, for DVT, it's a wrapper <laughs> to the DVT script. For Airflow, there's a series of operators and extractors, and it's kind of a complicated thing because Airflow is a kind of complicated platform. Um, I think that the best way to, uh, to extend the models through facets, I think the best way to get data into open lineage is to instrument it into these pipeline systems. There are some systems like Snowflake where we have to periodically query the access history and then like emit open lineage events into kind of a pull. Um, 
but I'd rather it be push. I think like that'd be that'd be probably the best. Yes. Open the edge. Can you execute it? So if I map with Spot, that points to the to execute the edge also. Was we can run it. We have that one. You use open the edge also. Like the use case being that you have multiple stacks that the data go to, and nobody keep all of that. They hate. You can tell off the last one, but what they want to rebuild intermediate data. So open lineage isn't isn't so much of an operations tool. Uh, it's receiving all the observations and showing them to the user. Um, there's some work being done to do automation, like with particular tools. Like um, there's a script that exists that will do automatic backfilling and airflow based on lineage and do downstream things and and that sort of stuff. But I I, I don't think it's that direct yet of an operational tool. It's it's more of an observation tool. So jumping into Marquez, um, I, I think I still have this running on my laptop. I might have to start it again. But this is it, Marquez is really easy to get going. And again, Marquez is the concrete metadata server. And so this is the thing you would send the open link events to. Uh, you can clone it, uh, Marquez project slash Marquez dot git. Once you close it, once you clone it, you just run docker slash up dot sh. Uh, minus s will seed it with data. Uh, there's actually three things you can send to that Docker script. Uh, seed will seed it with data, which is just a bunch of fake data, so you can see what the system does. Uh, detach will run in detach mode, and then there's a build, which builds from a source. If you don't run with build, it just pulls the Docker image, the latest Docker image. Um, let me show you what Marquez looks like. When you first encounter Marquez, uh, what you see is the list of jobs. These are the, 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 the demo jobs, and you can also see a list of data sets. Once you click into one of these, it takes you to the lineage graph, and as you can see, it is data set, job, data set. So on the edge of every data set is a job. On the edge of every job is a data set. Uh, and this can show you um, all of the different jobs that have run. You can see the code underneath, along with the facets, which is an empty set here. For a more complicated job, you'd find uh, perhaps more facets. There we go. So we can actually see now the facets, which in this case contain the schema for the data set. Um, it could contain a bunch of other stuff as well. But it is it is a very basic, kind of sh just essentially showing you what the lineage is and letting you sort of interrogate all of the different, the different parts of it. There are integrations for Airflow, Spark, DBT, um, Dagster as well, uh, but there may be a lot of situations where you need to emit lineage for something that isn't in a system. So there, of course, is um, a really easy way to do it with just... So th this is what an open lineage start event actually looks like. Uh, this is the simplest possible open lineage event you could have. There are no facets. There's not a complicated, you know, namespace or anything like that. But that's how you would start a job run, and that's how you would finish it. Uh, if you wanted to use the Python library, you could also use that as well. Um, but uh, it's it's pretty simple to get information into open lineage. the The tough part is figuring out how to get it, how to get coverage across the across the industry. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, uh, have it feed on like big data storage, or is when they are calling for it, and when they are there. So the, the, the core spec, the question is, what about column level lineage? Um, the core spec uh, deals with the data set as a table. However, uh, somebody recently implemented column level lineage using facets, using data set facets, uh, which is really cool. Um, so that exists in the spec. Uh, it exists in Marquez, but there isn't an interface for it yet. So it just end up in the, in the facets underneath. But that's currently uh, in motion, right? Uh, I think that the next thing we need to wait for is for the UI to start doing something smart with it. Uh, and then, um, yeah, that's that's an interesting one too, because column level lineage UIs can be really complicated. And how to show like that data set to data set thing, and then zoom in and get column level, that'll be a challenging UI thing. So that's pro probably the BPA about the brain. Right. All of Green Day's points is that they, um, the fake data for Mike, like for K or C, other files that call me great and ready. If they want to eat like their white quarter, I want them to know that you have tables. We come up to be perfect. Open it, it's a column level, very useful. I mean, not just UI, 
Wait, I'm play. And no, with the found speed. Wow. Mm -hmm. I believe the, the APIs are complete now. Uh, just not the UI. Yes. Is the author in Asia more about the data model, about the and metadata? Question. Uh, the second one is. You say about integration, are there a roadmap for tools as something? So the questions are, um, is there a roadmap? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the first question was? About the, it is open image about the metadata. Oh, yes, data VF. Yeah. So uh, when you when you send in a, a, a lineage update to uh, open lineage, it shouldn't contain any data, just metadata. Um, and uh, I, you could send data in facets. If you could explicitly do it if you felt like it, but I can't see a reason why anybody would. Um, so it's, it's primarily about metadata. Um, and I think, oh, I'm sorry, this is the second one. Second question. That is about the roadmap about the roadmap. Yeah, if, if you go to uh, Open Lineage uh, on GitHub, uh, there's, um, there's an issue tracker with a roadmap there. Um, I think it's pretty fresh. I think it's pretty fresh. But if you, uh, if you don't find something on there that you want to see, uh, feel free to add it. Yes. Is there, can I, from data lineage, can I get down to the row level? Can I look at a row in a table and figure out which job created that row? But if, you know, and if so, how would I, how would I go about doing that? There's nothing in the system now that's row level. Um, I suppose you could do it with data set facets. But there isn't any. There hasn't been any thought put into row level so far. Uh, one more question mm -hmm. about uh, the said row level lineage or something like that. There is nothing about that. But are there any flag or something to PII information or something like that? <laughs> so the way you would handle that in open lineage, uh, I would do that with a data set facet. As a matter of fact, I've had it on my task list for a while now to spec a, a thing out with a Snowflake integration that does exactly that. That uses the Snowflake object tagging, pulls it into an open lineage facet so that you can see, like, you know, did did this tagged information go anywhere? Like, um, so I think the way you do that is a data set facet. It hasn't been built yet, but I, that that's the way I would go about that. Uh, uh cool. I would yes, set. If the degree up. So, so one thing that... The that surprises me is that you are an open standard, we're getting buy-in from vendors, and yet you are the only means of Marquez is the only guy to read this data. So, and being, becoming an open standard requires some kind of trust that one vendor isn't going to monopolize the standard. So how does that, are there any alternative interfaces for this? Thing? Sure, you can use Astronomer. Astronomer also catches those events. Marquez is the open source alternative. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, that, that, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Senator Danielson from Bloomberg, by the way. We're involved in an open metadata project. It's been around for a while, and I do believe it's using uh, open lineage. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm being asked to be afraid of that. We also use Trino for most of our data pipeline, a good chunk of it now that we're just using SQL for all the detail chart. How would you see that integrating with the, with the open metadata? Because all the transformations are done in SQL and writing off to another data systems are going to SQL. How would you still integrate? Um, I'm not too familiar with Trino. It sounds kind of similar to DBT, the SQL transformation engine type of thing. For DBT, uh, each of those SQL transformations is represented as a job and the resulting table is represented as a data set. Um, so that's how that maps to the open lineage model. Uh, I'm not sure if Trino would map in a similar way, but there isn't currently an integration with Trino. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you've mentioned people like have jobs and you have job events start and, and show an image class. Mm -hmm. Our job may run my type of right for today, for instance. Would that become my type of nodes? That visualization would it become the same nodes as different? Okay. Good question. So I can sort of show on a job here, it ends up as the same node with a run history, uh, which is one completed run here. Um, 
But yeah, so it ends up the same node and then the runs are, so everything is versioned. Uh, every data set is versioned, every job is versioned, and then runs are shown like this as well. Then uh, other question you had mentioned at the beginning of data governance, right? Benefits that you, you said so, so this, <laughs> I don't think no, no owners here yet. No, there's, there's a, uh, that's correct. Yeah, that, that is one thing we've been talking about quite a bit is like, what's the social aspect of this? How do you determine who an owner of a data set is? And then what does that actually mean? Uh, I think that's, there's potential there, but not nothing concrete. It's here. Oh, 10. Oh, okay. Yes, Eric. So a uh, difficult question. Uh, you were talking about the, uh, the role level, all the low level uh, and UI of surfacing the full diminished information, but I always wonder what's next in terms of like business value out of that, because this is, this is like, for me, this is enabler for like lots of things. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, it's a foundation. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you think, what do you think will be the future of the data linux, how it will be used? Well, I think there's a lot of possibilities. I think mostly because I work at astronomer we're like the airflow folks, I think mostly of data ops. Um, so my, my, my mind might be a little bit limited here in creativity just because of my context, but I think of things like, um, a job failed overnight, you know, the job failed. So it, it cut it, it pulled a circuit breaker. None of the downstream jobs ran when we fixed the job. Now we know all those downstream jobs can run and the system can automatically trigger all those backfills. Like, I think it's stuff like that, where you can have airflow be smarter about retries and smarter about backfilling because it knows what's downstream and it knows what's upstream and it knows the status of those jobs. I think that's super interesting. Like, I think that's a really interesting future possibility. Maybe uh, just to follow up, what do you think about the, such a use case? We have some tools which are emerging, which are um, attempting to find uh, like anomalies in the data. I find uh, they, uh, the open lineage and like absolutely great enabler to be able, able to track the data anomalies where they came from, not really the failures of the jobs themselves, but also the data anomalies. Like here you have too many records or too little records or wrong records. And they are taking from here and there. Mm -hmm. And from there, maybe from maybe, maybe the, the, the actual reason will like completely different system, like five levels from, from, from where we, we actually observed it. Yeah. It's, so does, does it sound like a useful thing? I think so. There's there's a great expectations integration now that you can run uh, against the data set and it'll map and so it'll send the failed and past assertions along as data set facets. That's the beginning of being able to like notice that, wait, the row count is appreciably different and we don't know why. And that means it's broken, you know, or that, that kind of intelligent behavior, I think. Yes, sir. We have to, that is something. So we have look into uh, connecting if the job can run that uh, it's actually seeding a data set that makes for other jobs a job PD. It's at the end of the dashboard, right? And you want to give him the dashboard an indicator whether or not all I ran have been successfully run to actually show the correct result. Yeah. That's exactly what he's rich. Yes. Yes, sir. If you do get for example, the pro level ends to follow up on your comment there. You'd be able to for backtrack, for example, where where fan data was ejected into the data set. I think that would be cool. Um, you will say that the source is folk. You, you would be able to know that this row on this, that like that it looked like this when this data set was created. From, like it would, be, it would be a transactional record. I think that we'd still need to write something to do the analysis, uh, but having the data is the start, I think. We'll backtrack that and say five tests, five runs of fails, and say all went with the data from this for what? Yeah. So some things work. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's why now for an open standard for data lineage, is so we can get as much visibility as we possibly can. That's actually why I'm so excited about that, because I see the, like, what, how, what it can enable it. Yeah. Like, and right now it's a pot with like 20 stones and 14 carrots in it, but there's something, you know, and, and there's enough to build on and so we have to put some meat. Yeah. yeah we're waiting for chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but this, 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 I mean, this case is also a you board given a more, uh, enterprise scenario, right? Uh, 
and you have some that accountability assigned to it that you can keep the same okay you guys we have here uh, information about our employees and contractors and temporary workers and whatever right and to see your pay yes he will miss a car they don't have the side so for attributes also whenever right we're just agreed with about the data but you pull a higher level report in when you can write direct point to the guys that say you have like 79 uh, about 97 percent uh obviously the data the, uh, or liberal reasons for you yeah. For said you have to one cree that you had next six months to increase the data going to six percent for seventy percent. These type of things to pretend really assign, scribe, and also measure after what that says. They are citing things like if your data if you're getting data input into your table from save saying to your mother or some jab on them for he realized like the last white test to fail that data from this particular like even backtrack to which bombs. Yes, Jeff, in the bad bit. That's a bit situation of the side of it. Yes. Come to it's been on our website. Like many of the documents that we're going to see this. So when you started the open lineage thing, you, you said you, you started with 10 things, but like, how did you get the initial adoption or initial, like, how did you get people excited on open lineage? Like, Right now, yes, there's a room for the people thinking brainstorming around open lineage. What was the initial phase like and what were the <laughs> things for? So I wasn't there for it, but I can tell you about it. Um, so Marquez was the first thing that, that got built and it was built at WeWork actually. Um, so WeWork built Marquez um, and then Willie and Julian and Laura, who were the three sort of Datakin folks, left WeWork, started Datakin uh, to sort of build on Marquez and then very quickly realized that it, it the 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 implementation needs to be separated from the standard like in order for it to 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 really get full adoption that's what they felt and that split happened i would guess february of 2019 i think so maybe 2020 it's been a couple of years but marquez has been around for much longer than that other well, question but just uh and the question about the like how vendor specific the thing is. Mm -hmm. Do you plan any changes or evolution of the governance of the open AP or open lineage APIs? Because I think this is the this is the important part. Like the Marquez is purely data king astronomer now. And uh, what's what's that what's gonna happen with the open lineage API? So open lineage and Marquez are both LFAI projects. So they're not owned by astronomer Marquez, they're owned by the Linux Foundation. Uh sorry, it's not Apache. I didn't make that decision. <laughs> that was decided before I got here. Um, but they, they are they are owned by a neutral foundation. Um, and there are there's a process for becoming a committer. Um, it's not all astronomer and Datakin people that are committers. Ho hope, like, open Lineage more than Marquez is diverse. So Open Lineage is a pretty diverse community at this point. Um, Marquez, a bit less so because it's harder to get people interested in building a UI than it is people interested in building integrations with tools that they love. Um, so... Definitely, if you're interested, if you're a UI engineer, we need you in Marquez badly. Uh, so definitely join. Yes. In the main, uh, the word to the hectic the forwards of work. We have the fab UI. We don't do the back end, but we use the UIs. Have a different tape on it. Let me write and go. Have no, there's some of us yet. Ah, oh, that's okay. Cool. Okay. We should, we should talk. I, I, I could learn a lot more about Atlas, I'm sure. Um, well, thanks everybody. Uh, any, any final, final thoughts? No? Very Thank you. see lineage going beyond data. Where do I see lineage going beyond data? Like, uh, apart, like Metaflane and some other startups, like grind lineage for microservices and things like the hard bits. Do you, do you see people all think to that levels or just your final thoughts of lineage? Yes, sir. I'm not sure I have anything smart to say about that. <laughs> um, maybe yeah. Machine learning. Yeah. Maybe we should listen to yeah, It is the same thoughts. Yeah, that's that then. May you get the what bad or the streaming folks are delayed. Me, uh, put when as a post, they have or. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was.
Thanks everybody for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks for asking the questions.